my basement studio is tidy and that never happens. I did this, I think maybe two or three years ago and um, it just never looks, you know, presentable. So I decided um, last night that the reason I am not fully on the long arm or working so hard is because my, um, my usual space is too, too pretty. And so today I'm going to mess it up a little bit. Uh, I have some feed sacks cleaning and that will just start the pile. Um, I'm also going to work on the piece I showed yesterday. So I thought before I get really engaged, I would take you guys around. I don't know that I can um, answer questions while I'm doing this, but this will post and I'll come back and look at comments. But um, I'm an open book. I share a lot because I share so that you're inspired, so that you will get to work. I know too many people, too many friends that collect and you get all the stuff and you save and and it's hard to start, right? So I encourage you to just get something out, work on it, start the process, all right? So I'm at the bottom of my stairs. So most days I come down from the upstairs. I keep my um, my favorite little featherweight, my pincushion making is all upstairs because I sit in the little dining room area and I can look out the window and I can enjoy the snow and I can see everybody coming in and out. And I don't know, I just like that view. So that's really my morning and my evening, but I try and spend my daytime down here. So um, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. And then, you know, as the days, weeks, months go by, uh, it'll it'll change. So let's see behind me. Let's see if I have a light there. So behind me is this beautiful little uh, bow tie piece I quilted some years ago. And it's just a strip. I think the woman who made it, you can see that these are really tiny. I think the woman who made it, she got really tired of making it and then it just became this. So it never became a quilt. But it's a great, um, great piece for down at the bottom of my stairs, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to flip you guys around. You're not going to just look at me. I'm going to show you things on the walls and I'll just take you through and you'll see what it looks like. All right, so this was finished as our, you know, second family room space about 10 or 12 years ago. And it was just a, just a basement, and, um, but it was meant to have the long arm in it. So the long arm's way over there. And that was the purpose. But then it was supposed to be a family room, a bar area, a play area. And so it did become a play area. So this is where my, you know, my kids, everybody plays ping pong. But then when they, um, when they leave, it's so quiet. And so I'm going to mess this up today. And I'm going to pile my, my kit making and everything back there. So um, we're pretty lucky we have a guest room, which I have not made the bed yet. So I'm I got to do that and a nice bathroom in the corner and then store storage area over there, which we will not go in, but I have quilts on the walls. Um, Carl doesn't really like soft things upstairs. So we kind of have this deal that everything soft on the wall stays downstairs and I, that's fine with me. So that's a vintage pinwheel quilt. I found that at, um, where did I find that? At Brass Armadillo in Grain Valley, Missouri uh, last year. And it's vintage 1930s. Got an edge to edge on it. I just, I love that quilt. I just changed it out a couple months ago. And then, you know, I've shown you guys, I'm going to just take you in some of my closets because they're, they're bad. Quilts ready and all done. Okay, we'll close out right away. I'm sure you guys have that. And then I keep a lot of my, you know, my kids pictures around. I've already got my cutting mat out. So this is one of the really large cutting mats. I can't remember where I got that, but uh, I don't know. I've had it for quite a while, but it fits really nicely on the ping pong table. Okay, Catherine, you just asked, how do you have your, uh, your quilts on the walls? Well, these are just, let me take you around. I'm going to try and not spin you too fast because you'll get dizzy. <laughs> So let's go to this one. So this is a hanky quilt I did many years ago. And I've just put pins. Uh, let's see. So I just have straight pins. 
um, every five inches or so. There's a pin. Um, I have some that have uh, this one's pins. So it's pins up at the top on that one. This one though has a full on uh, curtain rod with a, with a sleeve because that one's heavy. So heavy ones get a curtain rod. And I always have them for my husband to put up, but I don't get them put up very quickly. So when I can't wait anymore, I just, I just pin them to the walls and I can replace them pretty easily. So this is a quilt I did maybe, oh gosh, now seven years ago. This one's called um, Champagne and Caviar. And there's a whole blog about this on my website. Uh, if you just go to my website, plug in um, Champagne, you'll get to this one. But this was a tablecloth. It was society silk, or it is society silk. So you can see I showed, I talked about society silk yesterday. Um, and it's just been quilted. Somebody asked me what I was going to do with the middle. And this is kind of looks like what I'm going to do with the middle. So when we get over there, I'll show that to you again. But this one has about a thousand hot fix crystals and uh, glass seed beads. It's it's one of my favorites. All right, uh, my little neighbor Remy one day, she spends a lot of time with me. These are the uh, crochet necklaces that I pick up at antique shops to cut up for the beads on my pin cushions. And then when I do kits, I put these in your kits as well. Well, yeah, I got a few right now. But she went a few months ago, she fixed up my mannequin right there. And I just love it. It's a great display spot. And so they stay there. And then when I need more beads, I just come down and grab, grab one. And then my sweet husband takes them apart for me. So um, let's see. If you all came along with me during COVID, we did this house quilt. Um, put a house every day. We were isolated. Love that quilt. I finally quilted it last year and I just straight line quilted it. So every day during isolation, I think there were 77 houses and I made a house every day. So, you know, mindless gave me something to do. All right. So normally this is all full of fabric and things I'm working on. I never see chairs <laughs> ever. But I know when my kids are here, they really like to sit down here in the morning and have coffee and visit. And so I, I cleared it off for them. Uh, this is that uh, fabulous uh, Star is Reborn is what this one is called. And uh, what did it get? Uh, it got second place at the Kansas City Regional Quilt Festival last year. If you followed me for a while, you watched me work on that one. And it's it's pretty spectacular. It's Another one of my favorites. I love to look at it every day. All right, cutting area, another cutting space. I cut a lot of my kits and strips and feed sacks here. Um, I also um, junk journal, so I keep a lot of my, all my fun stuff, my brads, my hinges, like all kinds of stuff in these cabinets. So I have a mix of uh, paper, junk journaling, uh, scraps, uh, fabrics, like everything's down here. So uh, I did an exhibit a few years ago where everybody took, I gave a bunch of my long arm friends this placemat piece and then they all created what they wanted with it. And then that traveled around the country. That was pretty fun. Uh, beads, bead collection, way, way, way too many but I put these in kits when I put up when I put together the kits I recently found this and I pretty much start my day looking at that because I think that's I am the queen of my own little world so it doesn't really matter it doesn't matter what it is what it looks like because it's mine right Okay, I got a great TV. I can watch movies. Honestly, though, I don't often turn on the TV anymore. Um, I keep a, a headset, a, a wireless uh, headset, and it's noise canceling. So I'll try and put links to some of these things that I use. Um, so brave, not having the beads in a snap box. Marianne says, oh, Marianne, I have snap boxes too. This is just the... Um, 
I'm going to say the overflow. <laughs> I have about six snap boxes, though, uh, that I keep keep um, beads in. So, okay, kit making area. Then I have lots and lots of storage. Um, I think it always helps to see how other people store. I have lots of rickrack, but I'm always collecting it because I put it into kits and I use it myself. And you wouldn't believe I can have so much rickrack and not have the right color. It's crazy. Um, floss. I have lots of floss. All kinds of linens, laces. I seriously come use pretty much all of this. These are things I just want to remember that I have and I pin them up here so that I'll find them quickly. Uh, shoe holder, which has become my fabric, vintage fabric holder. So these are just vintage. They aren't, they aren't uh, feed sack, but they are vintage. So a lot of times I come in and use that for, oh, backings, backings for things. Um, an old, uh, you know, this used to be our TV stand, but it's gone into more more storage. Okay, this is my wall of um, what I call special feed sacks. Back up just a little bit. That elliptical is in front. You know, you got to mix everything you need in a space. So all of our workout, our comfy, our machines, like everything we need is here. So this is my wall of what I call fantastical feed sacks. So these are the feed sacks that I'm probably never going to cut up because they're fantastical. <laughs> Bunnies. I used this one because I just recently got a duplicate. So if I get a duplicate, I might cut it. Oh, the pigs. Who doesn't love pigs? Let's see circus so you get the idea it's all the favorites we're really lucky when we uh, built the basement we had them take out what was the little window and they put in window wells so i have my geraniums that uh, <clears throat> are from the outside but they come inside in the winter time keep calm and quilt on all right, so I keep a Simply 16 right here, and this is where I do small pieces. Or if I'm working on something over there on the big long arm, I will put something small right here. And I've just taken off a small piece and I've put it over on the long one. You know, you all know trying to find space for everything. Cedar chest my husband made me in high school. I have nowhere to put it, nowhere. So. It just scoots right underneath there. And it's always there and I can still get into it. Um, if you watched me a year or so ago, I created that. Do what you love. It's a neon sign. So I had this old frame I had picked up at a estate sale that was empty. Then I had a pillow that I had created from an old quilt. So I took that all apart, added it, and my husband put all that together. And now I have that cool sign neon sign that pretty much rules my world do what you love right all right we're at the end of the room okay this is my this is my paper spot so i you know double duty try and keep my paper my junk journaling world kind of separate from my fabric world except i keep my this beautiful blue sewing machine, blue featherweight that I had painted uh, last year is in that space. So I can spin around. Sometimes I stitch on paper with it. Anne says, is it always this clean? <laughs> no, I started out saying, it's never this clean. That's why we're doing this today. <laughs> All right, so we have the nice bar, which never gets used as a bar. This is usually my kit making space. And then, oh, my coffee space, which let me let me have a sip while you guys look. Of course, you've got your treadmill, which actually is not always full because I do use it in the winter. But I just uh, have pressed some feed sacks. So this does become the feed sack ready to cut hanging spot. And then uh, you'll laugh at this. 
but it, it's it's critical. So people come, you know, my family in the very beginning came down here and it's like, mom, your refrigerator is open. Well, of course it is because it's not a refrigerator. So this is our refrigerator that was going for a long time when we used it as um, a family area. But since nobody's around and nobody's here, I use it for my trunk show, my trunk show storage. So I'm not doing trunk shows anymore, but it's all there. So if I need something or... If there's going to be an exhibit and I need something from there, I can find it pretty easily. So that's become my storage. And then there's a little bit of fabric on this side. I know, crazy, isn't it? It's been like this for about, oh, I bet five or six years now. Um, because when I was traveling, it was really easy to just go go in there and get get what I needed. All right. And then under the, you know, there's always there's always more stuff, folks ping pong table. All right, let's go over to the workplace. So, you know, I had, I'm going to flip you around for just a minute. I read something once, what makes something a studio and what makes it just your hobby space? And so for me, the, the definition or the, uh, you know, the, what makes it different? Uh, studio is where I work. And so the studio space is where I work. It's where I, um, I spend my day, my work day, and then my other space might be my hobby space. So that's why I call the studio, because the minute I walk downstairs, I am at work. So let's see. Marianne says, I want a gun safe. And I said I was going to store quilt stuff in there. Um, I would do that. In fact, my, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, my dad has offered to, to get us a gun safe. And I said, well, dad, I only have a couple because we, we're hunters. So um, I said, I only have a few guns. I don't know that I need it. We don't have any kids around. And um, I said, but honestly, I'll put quilts in it if you get that for me. I haven't yet, but not a bad idea. Okay, so back to, so there's my paper spot. It's not too bad right now. Not too bad. Um, I love to make junk journals. I haven't for a while just because I've been so into, you know, making pin cushions. So, um, so my long arm, I've got a 12 foot table, 12 foot um, uh, table, and then I've got a handy quilter forte. And I keep my ironing board here because I can iron and I can watch my machine while I'm ironing. So it's a really good spot. I've moved my iron around many times while I've been in this space, but honestly, this works the best. People, you know, I see the question, what's your favorite iron? Well, what is this? An old Black & Decker classic. I got that at a thrift store for $2 about four years ago, and it has been my best iron ever. <laughs> okay, last year, my big splurge was this. Now let's move, move some feed sacks. So this is a presser steamer. Love this. Love it. And then uh, my husband said I needed a hydraulic table for it. So I can. So if he's here, he uh, he can move it up. If I'm here, I can move it down. But both of these things together have been lifesaver, like just a lifesaver. And this can press a feed sack in about four presses. So for me, it's just made everything efficient. Um, I keep I always have a tub of embroideries down below so that I'm ready and I've got things ready to work on. So if I'm kind of stuck, I just come fiddle through that tub and find find some goodies. Okay, let's go to the spot. So this is where I spend a lot of my day uh, if I'm quilting. And you saw that right now I'm working on this beautiful, beautiful society silk. And when I'm done here, that's what I'm going to go work on today. Uh, like I said, I have a handy quilter forte with Pro Stitcher computer. And I just mostly use that when I'm doing edge to edge. But it also, you know, sets my stitch length, will set my needle down because I always like to work with my needle down. Let's put the needle down so I don't forget that. Um, people always say, what's that, Kelly? Well, this is just a little Tupperware the little Tupperware bowl I have taped to my handle, so I put all my threads in there. It's just fast and easy. Um, they do have a magnetic strip here. You can put your scissors, but I am right-handed. So I have put a little magnet right here, and then I keep my scissors there. 
just because I need it fast. Uh, what else? Let's see. I, I you know I, I talk a lot about uh, bearing threads, and I just stick it in my foam handles. Red snappers. I love the red snappers. That's how I put everything on. I'm not a pinner, so I red snapper to my to my poles to my leaders. Let's see, what else are you going to ask me? You're going to say, where'd you get that rug? Uh, Ikea. <laughs> Ikea is good for so much. Let's see, my tray. I love this. This is my, my I call this my surgical tray. It's actually um, an automotive oh, uh, little rolly thing that you can put over by your, you know, when you're working on a car and it has all your tools, goes up and down so you can raise it, lower it. I love this. So it's a mess. Okay, this is a real mess right now, but that's okay because it has everything I need within reach. And I will just roll this over to my long arm when I start working today. And um, it's everything's handy. And like I said, at my fingertips, I have this, my husband, Carl, and I made this back in the 80s. We made this shadow box. And um, my mom, it for my mom. And she said to me a few years ago, she said, I don't really use that. Would you like it? So now it just holds all my little precious, my precious little things that people have made or given me or things I've collected. I just love it. And then I keep, this is where I keep all my family pictures. This is just my, my memories, right? All my stuff pictures, pictures, pictures. Let's see. And then my wall of wall of fun, wall of fame. This came from Talene Jeffrey. She did the tablecloth or that placemat the year I had that exhibit and she lives in South Africa and she told me I could keep it. So it hangs on my wall. Uh, bad quilt, bad day of quilting beats a good day at work. Ain't that the truth? A few ribbons. I'm not one to really enter shows, but if it's local, or if it has a vintage category, or if it's easy, then I have entered. Uh, Handy Quilter gave me those great scissors. They are large. <laughs> and then things that aren't quite finished or things that people have give, gifted me. This one's from Cindy Needham. I love that one. Julie Lechner made that one. I truly believe that. I'm going to make everything around me beautiful. That will be my life. That's one of my favorite sayings. Let's see. That's from my little friend, Alice. When I went to Canada, she made me that <laughs> on my door. And from my granddaughter, Juniper, she made that. I've just recently found that cross stitch. So I want to do something with it. I'm not sure what yet. And this has a whole story, but we won't go into that. <laughs> and my other window well. And I just keep my bobbin winder there. Let's see, another piece that is from a pattern from Talene Jeffrey, Lady Jane Quilting. You can find that on her website. Okay, let's see. I think the last place I'm going to take you is into my closet. I know everybody wants to see. Kelly, where's all the stuff? Where's all the stuff? So when we built this, we did have, we had two columns in the basement, right? Like most of your basements have. And instead of the columns, um, we took out the, we took the columns out and through the window, they brought in a beam. So we, I would have this nice expansive opening, which is great because um, to watch TV, just for arrangement of stuff, right? So that has helped, that really opened up our space. It's a really it's a really, really cozy basement. I'm very, very lucky to have it. Oh, um, let's see. This is good storage idea. A uh, shoe, uh, you know, a shoe shoe holder just hangs over my door with all kinds of junk, you know, just literally junk. And then when I close the door, it's hidden, right? All right. So there's this long wall, and. Uh, there's two doors. And why would there be two doors? Well, it's going to, it's, it's my secret spot. And I'll take you in there for just a minute, but don't tell anybody. 
just for a minute. But it it's hidden. It keeps all my fabric clean. Um, one thing about my space is it's very clean. We don't have any animals right now. Our last dog we put down like seven years ago. So we both agreed no animals because we're gone a lot. Plus, I try to keep it really clean because I was quilting for hire for so long. And I just wanted everything to be um, pet free. So it's it's I don't always like it because I like having a pet, but it makes my life easy. So um, so no pets. So everything that comes in here is clean unless I put it in a tub or a box and it's to be cleaned. So all my feed sacks are clean by the time they get here. When they get to the um, to, to this spot, they're ready to be pressed. And so my closet is full of just clean fabric because I have a big bad mold allergy, which um, as if you follow me, you know when I clean, I clean in retro clean with a splash of ammonia because the ammonia takes out the mold and mildew. So um, yeah, so everything in here is clean, ready to use. So when I make kits, um, when I make my pin cushions, when I work on quilts, everything I find in here is ready to go. And I, cause I don't like to wait. Like if I see something or I touch something, I want to work on it right now. Okay. No apologies for this closet because I use a lot of stuff and you all know, you all, everybody knows that during COVID we were all really glad to have a stash because we didn't need a thing. Um, so I don't, you know, unless I'm traveling, I don't really go shopping. Um, I'm sorry, I don't shop fabric shops because I don't buy new fabric. I only buy feed sacks um, or old vintage fabrics. So uh, I also used to work at a bookstore for 14, 15 years. I worked at Half Price Books, so I have a lot of books. Trying to um, wiggle those out because I don't look at them very much because I'm not piecing. I got them thinking I will be a piecer one day, but I never became one. So. I know my path. I know I know what my passion is. I know what I will never do. And I know what I want to do. So I think if you can uh, whittle your craft and your art and what you love to do, if you can whittle that down, then your focus will be better. Because I, when I started quilting 12 years ago was when I got this space. I got rid of, I gave away all my yarn. I gave away, um, I gave away anything. Well, I paint, so I, I still have my paints and my brushes, but I gave away anything that was not quilting related because I knew I probably would not ever use it again. So, okay, without further ado, let me flip you. Let's walk into the closet. All right, so bookshelf. Okay, are you prepared? Uh, so it's about a 20 foot long closet. It's shelved one, two, three, four, and then tubs at the bottom. Oh, I know folks, it's a little crazy, but I love it. I can come in here, find what I need. I keep feed sacks ready to go. I keep them color coded. I keep quilt tops ready to go. And then down here I keep a shelf that has, and I have it pretty well organized. Who says I'm not organized? Uh, small tablecloths, hankies, uh, backings. And there we are. Ta-da! And back out. All right. <sighs> that gave you a pretty good idea of what everything looks like. I also keep, I keep a closet. I keep, I keep a couple of closets. We won't go into those. I keep on other couple of closets of hanging quilts, of quilt tops, of um, supplies I'll need, you know, extra supplies, batting. Um, I keep that in the storage room. All right, let me see if, if you all have comments and no apologies. Yeah. See, I know you guys and I know your entire studios look like that. So I don't really need to apologize because it's it's work, right? It's a it's it's work. <laughs> Marie, that closet is amazing. How did you choose the quilt that hangs in there? Um, closet, the quilt that hangs in there. Oh, I think you mean. Oh yeah, my closet's pretty cool. Oh, there's a quilt. Oh, there's a panel. 
there's a panel that hangs here. It's backwards because I'm backwards here. But it's a KU panel. And I bought that um, maybe last year. And I thought, I'm going to put that in a in one of my kids, uh, one of the grandson's quilts probably one day. But I've got it um, hanging so I won't forget it and I won't lose it. You guys have that problem? Do you ever lose what you put in? Mm, yeah. Let's see. Anne, I see a stool in the closet. Do you use it when quilting on your long arm? Yes. Um, that's a saddle stool. And if I'm doing, which I might do on this um, this piece probably will be having the stool come out because there is so much micro micro work, little tiny work in here. So yes, I will probably sit for a while. Let's see, here it is. This is a saddle stool. Works really well. I like how ergonomically you just sit and it kind of leans you forward. So yeah, that gets a lot of use if I'm sitting. All right, Gayla, so interesting to see you. Thank you, Natalie, love it. All right, well, that gives you an idea of where I work, what I do. Um, you know, it's a hobby, but I'm really lucky to have a hobby job, right? I mean, we don't all get that in life. So um, very, very fortunate. Um, yeah. All right, folks, um, I'm gonna get to this, uh, this little uh, piece on the frame and um, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have questions, just ask me and I will, I will um, answer whenever I can. All right. Okay. See you guys. Let me see if I can figure out how to turn this off. Uh, I'll leave you with that. All right. Okay. See you guys later. Bye-bye.